Welcome to labmins.com. In this video, we will be looking at two features on Cisco Nexus 1000V called vTracker and TACX. vTracker allows you as a network administrator more visibility to the VM environment. As you will see in a minute here, it gives you a lot of information that you need, especially when troubleshooting, without having to lock into the vCenter. TACX on the other hand, as you are already probably familiar with, is used for device admin, and we will look at how to configure that to work with the Cisco ACS server. Here's our lab setup. On the physical topology, we have two ESXi servers, ESXi1 and ESXi2. Each has two network interfaces uplinked to a switch one and also running LACP. We have VSM and VM installed in layer three mode with the VSM and all other VMs running behind VEM. Now on the logical topology, it's pretty straightforward. We have a Cisco ACS 5.4 running on VLAN 32 at the IP of .100 and we have a Nexus 1000V with the management 0 with the IP of 172.16.112.16. Okay, so the first feature we are going to look at is vTracker. So here on our command line, we do show feature. And you can see by default vTracker is disabled. So all you need to do is just to type in command feature vTracker and you will be able to enjoy the benefit of vTracker. And that's all you need. So now if you do show vTracker question mark and these are all the show options show command options that you are able to do with the feature so let's go from top to bottom and start off with the show vTracker module view pnic and enter so this will give you a list of all the uplinks interface on the ESXi server so here we have two module 3 module 4 for ESXi 1 and 2 it will tell you exactly what the VM NIC the servers is using the MAC address and the, the, its make of the network interface. Okay, so now the next command is show vTracker upstream view. As the name said, it's probably going to show you, uh, give you information on the upstream connectivity. So enter. As you can see, it tells you what is the upstream network device the particular ESXi host is connected to. And for us, all we have is a switch one. And these are all the corresponding port on those switch and the ports on the, on the network interface on ESXi and the corresponding VM NICs. And in addition to that, it also tells you whether or not it's running LACP and what port channel it's currently, or the ID is currently using. Okay, another important piece of information that you see here is the virtual ethernet interface that's currently utilizing those particular uplinks, as you can see here. And this will help you figure out exactly what's the physical path a particular VM used to get out to the upstream switch. So you can see here, this particular man looks very similar to a show CDP, but it gives, actually gives you additional information in the last two column here, as compared to if you do like a show CDP neighbors. And right here, I guess one additional piece of information a show CDP neighbor shows you is the platform of the upstream switch. Okay, but you can see it's, it's very similar and both give you a very useful information. Okay, the next command is show vTracker VLAN view and enter. And this output is very similar again to the VLAN, a show VLAN brief, but it tells you exactly what virtual ethernet port and the, the name of the VM, as well as the corresponding adapter names of that particular VM that's utilizing those VLANs. And also the module or the ESXi host that that particular VM is on. Okay, next command is vTracker VM view. And here we have two options. One is the first one is info, so let's do that first. So what this command tells you is the very detailed information of a particular VM. So just to look at one example right here, which is our primary VSM of our Nexus 1000V, it says the tells you the guest OS, the virtual CPU, the usage, the memory allocations and the usage, the data stores, and also the uptime as far as how long the VM has been running for. So these are pretty much the same type of information that you can get or obtain from the vCenter, but actually without logging into the vCenter, you can do it right here in the command line. So let's go back to that same command and do question mark. You can also specify if you know exactly what the name of the VM you're looking for. So let's try it one right here. So you don't have to go through the whole, the long list of VM, especially if you're in a large environment with a couple hundreds of VMs, for example. So here we, specifically tells or we want to look at this particular VM and you can see one thing to note here the uptime is NA since this particular VM is not currently running so this command not only tells you uh, gives you the information on the active VM but also all, actually all the VMs that's 
currently on the vCenter, whether or not it's powered on. Okay, so let's go back to the show vTracker VM view question mark. And our second option here is vNIC. And here it will tells you or gives you a list of the virtual adapters that are currently associated or connected to the Nexus 1KV without the MAC address and the type and whether or not that particular link is up or down. You can see right here again the VM we just looked at and since it's powered off that particular V Ethernet is down and also it tells you the exact pinning as far as which uplinks interface that particular V uh, adapter is using. So you can see here we have a combination of port channel 1 for ESXi1 and port channel 2 which is where our uh, vCenter is currently using. Okay, so let's keep going with the show V tracker. Question, the last option is V motion view. And you have an option to do last. This question mark, and you can set 100, uh, 10 counts. So just tell you the last 10 events of V motion. You can see here we did that a couple of days back, actually yesterday, since we've been done that today. And this is for the this particular VM in 2008 our domain controller from moving from module 3 to module 4 and module 4 to module 3 okay you can even track the vmotion activity basically from the command line as well and you can also do now which is going to give you the vmotion that's ongoing which again we do not have that currently and useful information for you to track down the movement of the VM if you help your, for example, server team to troubleshooting some issues. Okay, so those are pretty much all the output command that you get for the vTracker, but it is definitely a lot of information, or useful information. Okay, so the next feature we are going to look at is TACX. So let's do show feature. And here TACX again by default is disabled. So what you need to do is do a command feature tack x and now if you do tack x question mark you see that we have a valuable command of tack x plus as well as tack x uh, dash server okay so tack x plus if you do enable to enable tack x and then the rest of the command will be on the tack x dash server you can specify some of the common command if you're familiar with the uh, configuration of the tack x and whether it's catalyst or the other nexus platform that time, host, key, and timeout. So let's go through those. First, we do TACX server host, and we say our TACX or ACS server is the IP of 32.100. So 1632.100. And just a little warning popped up there. It said key is not configured. And let's do that right now. So TACX server key, just do a simple Cisco. And another option is timeout. If you were to have redundant pair of ACS, you can specify the timeout period before it will fail over, as well as the dead time as far as if the ACS server happens to fail, how long it takes before the fail back to happen. So dead time, let's do say five minutes. Okay, now what you need to configure next is the AAA group server. And you have two options between radius and TACX. Since we're doing TACX, we'll pick TACX and we'll have to give it a name. We're just going to call it TACX in caps. So a question mark. Now you have to specify server. And this is the server that we just configured. So IP 172.16.32.100. You can even override the dead time, the global dead time. For example, if you want to do 10, you can do that. And now you specify the VRF. So use VRF question mark. And we know that our VSM management zero interface is in the management VRF. So type in management and source interface. We also want to specify as management zero. Okay, so now that we have the TACX server configured, now we have to configure the AAA commands himself so start off with triple a authentication will be lock in and this one let's do some common 
commands first is to enable errors or any errors will be locked. Okay, and then do console for groups. Actually console, let's keep it local. So just want to use the local uh, username database, the one that we have been using so far, but we want to use anything else. For example, the VTY or SSH, we want to use the group tag X that we just created and then fail back to local. And you can see the other local is not really an option, but if you type it in, it would take it. Okay, just to show you, although we're not going to do this with the command authorization, you can also do command authorization if you wish. So you would, what you would do is command default groups and then tag X. And if you want to authorize config command, you specify config. Okay. The last triple A command we want to do is the counting. So anything that happens or our active triple activities will be locked to the ACS server. So with the triple A counting default group, again, tag X and enter. Now just to show you real quick what we have configured on the ACS for this. So here we have ACS pulled up. And if you look at the network resource, we did not create any specific groups. Just go ahead and looks like it's timed out. So let's lock back in. Back to network devices. We already have a Nexus 1000V added with LM-N1KV for the name. Here's the IP of the management zero interface. We'll use the TACX. And if you show a secret, it's just Cisco. Okay, so it's all set. And... For users, we are using local user here. We create a user called lap minutes with a complex password with no groups or anything like that. So again, you're using local user, but if you wish to use Active Directory, then you would do an integration right here. Okay, and then we have also the under the policy elements, under network access, or actually it's the device admin, show profile. We have one called Pri15 Max15 that will return a privilege and max privilege of 15 on each. So we know we have the correct privilege for that. And as far as the access services, we have the LM device admin configured with the two default disable. And under the identity, we're using internal user. And for authorization, we just only condition based on protocol, and then it will get the pre 15 max 15. Okay, so basic, very basic setup on the ACS just to get the lock-in uh, access to work. So now let's bring up, now that we have the AAA enable on the Nexus 1000V, let's bring up another SSS session. And let's do open. But let's try the account lock-in that we normally use. Now you can see, now we no longer, we can no longer access with that particular account. So let's close that out and try again with PuTTY. This time, use the lab minutes uh, user that we lo uh, create locally on the ACS. And now you can see that we can successfully lock in. And to test our accounting configuration, let's try to do something. Let's see, uh, show interface brief. Let's pretend that we want to configure something on E3 slash 3, for example. And then exit. Now go back to our ACS and then monitoring and reports. We'll bring up a new page for that and a catalog with the AAA protocol. And here we have, let's take a look at authentication first. So tax authentication, although we know that works. So let's do last 30 minutes. You can see right here, the first fail was when we used the local admin account. And since we specified to use to authenticate against ACS and admin is not known to ACS, that one fail. And then we tried the second attempt with the lab minutes username and screen, which means pass the authentication. So let's go back and take a look at TACX accounting. Okay, so we see a couple entries here. Okay, with this one, when we first lock in, the user got added to the switch, which we'll see in a second here. And when we issue the command interface Ethernet 3.3, that got locked as well on the server. Okay, so going back to this command, and if you were to do show user account, you see here, these are the account that we created. This one is the default admin account. This one we did back in the SNMP video and we created the, the user call admin and capitalized. 
and here is the user lab minute that was that just got added when we were when we were successfully authenticated just now. Okay, and the role is the network admin, and you can even see here it said the account created through remote authentication. Okay, the last thing I want to try is to since we specify for the console a local console access to continue using the local accounts, I'm going to bring up the console to the Nexus 1000B right here, and we're going to try to log in and see if it works with the local account. Okay, so log in. Yeah, you can go ahead and try the lab minutes one. And that should not work, as you see here. Then let's try the admin. And now we can lock in with the local admin account. And this is when you console in to the Nexus 1000V. Okay, so again, VTracker, very useful and very easy to configure. Or actually, I should say it's super easy to configure compared to the amount of information that has become available to you. And also, TACX is something that most environments would need for the device admin. Okay, so that wraps up our video on Nexus 1000V with VTracker and AAA with TACX Plus. Thank you for watching labminutes.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.